There are nearly 2,000 bird species busily performing a symphony in the Columbia skies. They range from unique natives to wanderers from distant lands. Colombia, it's uh, in fact the paradise of the bird watchers. It's the paradise of birds. Uh, we have uh, free mountain, uh, uh, three mountains, two oceans. We have uh, deserts, we have uh, the llanos, uh, and we have a lot of uh, landscapes. We have a lot of ecosystems that allow about the 20% of the birds of the world. Javier Cajeo is a Colombian biologist and bird watching expert. He combines science and storytelling to inspire a love for nature. With years of field experience in the Amazon, he brings birds and their magic to life through his writing. Javier, you know, I sit at home sometimes having coffee and I look outside and I see a cardinal or something like that and I'll say something to my wife and we admire the birds. I think everybody falls into that category. But to actually take the leap and become a bird watcher, there has to be an event that kind of changes your life. Can you talk about that experience? I studied uh, biology uh, in Bogota at the Universidad de los Andes. And I remember I took uh, one assignment in ornithology. And uh, I remember the first time I went uh, at the outsides of, of the city. And uh, the one of my, of, of my companions says, hey, look, there is a, uh, a, a toucan bird with a, with a great big beak. And I, I say, no, it's impossible. I live here at the 40, 45 minutes and uh, I don't think there is a token nearby Bogota. So I took my, my um, binoculars and, and it was just in front of me. And I, I remember that moment, I say, it's incredible that there are a lot of things I was missing until this moment. From that moment, I, it's impossible to go outside without my binoculars and it's impossible to go out uh, without a bird guide. And I, I think the incredible uh, thing with, with birds, it's uh, you don't have to do a lot to become a bird watcher. Yeah? You say that those experiences from our window uh, and you can, you can see uh, a lot of birds. The, the art, it's in appreciate the magic of the moment. It's appreciate the magic of that bird. And maybe you can find something uh, extraordinary in the ordinary thing. The magic of birds has flown through the pages of books. with them ideas and emotions, each bird fluttering with a story of its own. Colombia, also known for great literature, Gabo, of course, uh, magical realism, uh, and, and you're talking about magic. Talk to me about uh, the, the magic of birds and, and trying to capture that in your book. My book, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's titled, it's a um, secret guide of birds, yeah? And uh, I mean, secret guide because uh, are the birds, uh, that, 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 um, those are the voices of the birds that, um, that count uh, all of it, their stories, but not the stories that everybody knows but those uh, particularities that the curious uh, facts about uh, some of those species we have uh, we had to 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 select just 
16 uh, species, but the, the, the original list, it was 100, 200 lists, and we have to filter that to, to reach uh, 16 species that comprehend all ecosystems from the coast, from the mountains, from the Amazon, and uh, all of these species has something special to say. And, and, it, and, and the bird says their own stories. Yeah. And it's for bird watchers of all ages, right? I mean, you, you're not uh, targeting a specific age. And that's the other thing that's beautiful about bird watching. You can be old and you can be young and still go and do it, right? Absolutely. Bird watching, it's, it has um, a lot of particularities uh, that explain what, uh, why it's a so popular activity, though it's cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But if you want to see some uh, a bird in Japan or, or in Africa or in Colombia, well, you have to spend in travel. But you can do it at your background. You can do it uh, in your city or in every city. Birds are everywhere in the world, from the Arctic uh, to the Antarctic, uh, in all of ecosystems. There are birds everywhere. So it's an activity that um, that can that can practice and they, that can do it everyone everywhere so it's uh, it's it's beautiful uh, many many years ago back in the 1980s i did a story with roger tory peterson who wrote all those bird guides for years i mean starting in 1934 and one of the things that uh, i mean i was just doing a story on him but one of the things that i took away from it and i want to get your thoughts on this is it's it's back then, of course, people didn't have cell phones, but this is putting down your cell phones, getting out into nature. It teaches you patience, observation. It teaches you so much. Can you talk about the benefits of bird watching? It's almost like meditation in a way too, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely, absolutely. For me, it's a way of meditation. It's a way to encounter with myself. It's a way to encounter with the nature. It's a way to encounter with another possibilities. Uh, I think, and I say it, uh, that we are immersed in a world of technology. We are immersed in a world of uh, velocity, with, uh, in a world of immediatism. Uh, so uh, when you walk out, when you are with, uh, with, when you are searching for birds, you have to practice your patience. You have to practice and your you have to go with silence yeah because if you are going uh, doing uh, talking with uh, with somebody making a lot of noise birds uh, goes uh, immediately yeah so you have to learn to listen you have to learn to watch uh, you have to learn to move yeah and and those things i think uh, take you to another dimension, mental dimension, yeah, because you are immersed in another activity and you forget about uh, your cell phone, you forget about uh, the news, you forget about the chaos of the world. Javier, what's so interesting about bird watching is you learn so much about birds, but I think you also learn about yourself. What, have, what has it taught you about you, do you think? I'm a really normal person. <laughs> I am a biologist. I love nature, I love animals, but I work now in education. I am convinced that the only way to change to change uh, this world it's uh, working with children it's working uh, with boys with girls uh, and transmit to them a little bit of what, of your experience uh, transmit to them a little bit of your knowledge
anyone who sits down to write a book uh, obviously wants someone to pick it up and read it, right? Um, but they want to inspire or have a message. Um, when you wrote your book and it went out there into the world, it's like a bird flying away in a sense. Uh, what was your hope? I, I confess you that when I write, I don't, I, I'm not thinking there is someone that it's uh, going to read it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I write uh, thinking more. It's, it, it's another um, personal exercise near to meditation, the right, the right exercise. And, and I, don't, I don't think in that moment uh, this is what someone is going to read. Uh, but when I write it, I, my, my hope is that anybody that, uh, that, that read the book, it's more enthusiastic to go out and, and, and see what, what it finds. Yeah? Uh, I say to children, for example, I work with, with children in school, I say uh, those are 16 stories, but there are a lot more of stories that another bird can say. Uh, there are hundreds of stories. You have to go out and reach for that new stories, for the new secrets of birds. And um, I think this is my hope. My hope is that people appreciate more what we have in nature, uh, in, in a world that is really, really in, a, in, in, a, in an environmental crisis. Yeah, so I think if more people go out, if more children go out and appreciate what, what they have, uh, maybe they take care more of those things. I've got one final question for you uh, because I've been out with people who are bird watchers uh, and it seems like they'll race to get that one like glimpse of that one special bird that they've been trying to get. Is there is there one that's been elusive for you? Is there one that stands out that uh, that you love more than any other? Uh, Give us an anecdote, if you will, to leave us. Uh, there are a lot of birds that, that, that I love to see, and there are a lot of birds that I, 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 I will like to, to see someday. But there, is, uh, there are two species that are really, really significant for me. Um, for, the experience, for the experience that, uh, that mean when, when I saw them. One and, and two of them are in the book. One is the cock of the rock of the Amazon. Uh, it's uh, the male, it's uh, an orange bird, it's uh, spectacular. The mating uh, uh, behavior, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's uh, really amazing because the, those birds uh, stand in, uh, in some branches of the, of the trees and they make a dance and uh, then make uh, like a stadium game uh, so the, the female uh, selling the, the one the, 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 the one this is a beautiful a beautiful species and there is a hummingbird so I have the, for the, 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 the fortune of living in, in the Amazon for some years and this is really really amazing bird it's a big uh, hummingbird but the colors uh, are amazing for your, for your, for your eyes. Uh, you can believe it when you see it because the colors change with, with, the, with, the, with the light, with the angle of the, of the sunlight. Uh, but it's uh, red with green, with uh, black, uh, black back. So you see it and you can believe it that this is a bird, that this is a, a, living, a living being. Yeah, I think those are two species that for me are really, really special. Well, Javier, I hope people pick up the book and pick up your passion because it's evident in your eyes as you talk about it. Uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you.